our success, Mr. Speaker, is a contingent success. If we keep our taxes under control, pay down our debt, build the jobs of the future, attract investment from around the world, orient our economy towards the future careers of young people, it's going to be an entirely different story and you all have an interest in that. Hi, I'm Chris Alexander, Member of Parliament for Ajax Pickering, and it's a busy week. Hey Sean, what is Chris doing today? Today, Chris is here holding a round table in Ajax. So here we are on Highway 401 in Ajax. People here want Canada to be positioned for the future. So it's a fragile world out there, but we have some fundamental foundations of success here. Uh, that we need to keep building on. Today we are at Coffee and Conversation in Claremont, a neighborhood in the northern part of our riding. Which brings us to immigration. We need to make sure people come with the right skills, have their credentials recognized quickly because they've started the recognition process earlier. So today we're making an announcement. It's on behalf of the Minister of Transport, Vinnie LaBelle, about federal funding for a new interchange, a cloverleaf, on Highway 407. Exciting announcement, big piece of infrastructure. But what we're not going to do is put in place a $21 billion carbon tax that would increase the price of gasoline, obviously, but also of food and just about everything. Just met with the Afghan ambassador to Canada, Barna Karimi, whom I know very well from Kabul. But obviously the issue that's on everyone's mind is the status of international forces in Afghanistan after 2014. In every counterinsurgency, you need to put pressure on the insurgents to no longer be with the extremists. À tous les membres de l'opposition, comment ça pourrait s'expliquer? The parliament, by its very definition, is adversarial. When we disagree on television or in the house, it's not because we can't stand each other. It's because we're testing ideas. It's so important to engage young Canadians in political debate. Everything that this parliament does is about their future, the future of Canada, and nothing will happen the way it should happen unless we hear their views. They're going to be the ones here decades from now, 50, 100 years from now, and that's why we were trying to move from rhetoric to action, to get results. We're the first government in Canadian history to actually succeed in reducing our emissions. There are certain principles on which we will not compromise. Those of a free market economy, those of a strong justice system that protects victims, and in the world, the rule of law, freedom, democracy, and human rights. These were the founding principles of the United Nations, but we need to do much more today to make sure they are respected in all parts of the world, uh, to help solve the conflicts that have gone unsolved for too long. So Chris, why are you a politician? I believe in public service. I've been a public servant all my professional life, and I think it's a high calling. I met Chris in uh, Afghanistan. He was the new, young, dashing ambassador. Chicago, well, diplomacy at its best is always about politics. So transitioning from representing our country's politics and trying to understand the politics of other countries to being part of our country's politics wasn't that difficult. What Chris is particularly good at, I think, is relating to a very diverse group of people. He has this real um, connection to people. And uh, I think particularly for younger uh, voters, for example, that he's very interested in pop culture, he's very interested in art. You have to think about what Canada's going to look like 20, 50 years from now. Our mining industry isn't just about taking base metals out of the ground. It's about geophysics. It's about remote sensing. Our financial sector isn't just about having tellers in banks. It's about financial risk management. It's about econometrics. And these are areas where Canadians excel. But we need to go beyond that. We need to invest in emerging fields like nanotechnology like quantum technology, like advanced forms of manufacturing. Canada's parliament has been here since the 1850s, since before the American Civil War, since before Germany and Italy were united. But we are still a very young country in one very important sense, and that is in our openness to new ideas. We debate them in this parliament, we engage with them with Canadians across the country, uh, and we're implementing them. We have the opportunity to implement them, almost like no other country in the world, to build the economy of the future where the young people of today are going to be playing a central role.